Good morning, everybody. Um, my name's Joe Patton, and I work with the dairy uh, advisory side of the house at Chagas, and we've Sean Cummins uh, also on B beef advisory. So, look, this morning, uh, or for this board, what we just want to do is you know, you're going to see a lot of technologies today, and a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of detail information down along the stands as we go. But I suppose with all of these things, we have to put um, any of the technologies we're talking about, we have to put them in the context of um, the farming system that will be deliverable and most profitable maybe for, for farms uh, on the ground. Okay, so as we all know, and we're, we're, we've, we've seen, we're, we're so used to it in this country, we probably take it for granted in a way that grazing systems or grass-based systems are the thing that really is our competitive advantage internationally. And it's something that we have to, we really have to protect and ring fence and, and really, you know, show the benefits of really from both from a sustainability, a profit uh, and uh, um, environmental point of view as well. So our board this morning is just going to look at, you know, simple targets for dairy, simple targets for, for, for beef as well. And the technologies that we talk about later on, we are really trying to frame them within, can we, you know, can we frame those technologies within um, what's good farming practice as well from a, from a production point of view? Because I think, you know, you'll hear a lot today about implementation and the big, the big point is that, you know, days like this are fine if we're, if we're talking about um, all the different options, but if we don't get if if the if the technologies we're talking about don't fit into the farm and systems that we're running, they're not going to be taken up uh, in in enough, I suppose. So look at that's where we're that's where we're going uh, this morning. So really, you know, it's something we have to be, you know, we, we have to be very clear on that pasture and and grass based systems. They're they're a, a serious advantage that we have, and you know. Um, just happened over the summer to to visit a couple of countries in Europe, uh, looking at where grazing fits in in their systems, and it's definitely something that we have a we have a huge huge advantage on, and that possibly, as I say, because we're all sort of doing grazing to some extent, we probably underestimate the importance of it. Uh, you know, at a European level, there's lots of countries. If you, you'll you'll know this, they're trying to incentivize farmers to do more grazing. Uh, we we we're able to do it. Um, we're able to do it naturally, I suppose, or do, do it and, and, and give ourselves that advantage. So look at, um, we just have a list of different uh, metrics on the board here. Uh, I'll take, the, I'll take the, the dairy ones and Sean, you can see they're pretty much a mirror image of each other. Sean can take the ones for the, the beef side of things as well, okay? So look at, we know, and I think one of the points we, we need to make, and you know, Sean will come to this as well, we're all very used, I suppose, looking at the, um, the production type targets that we would, um, you know, on the, on the dairy side, so whether that's dairy EBI or milk output per cow or concentrate fed or grass grown, those those targets get a lot of hearing, I suppose. Okay, and they're they're very they're important in their own right, but you know we have to be also clear that they have to fit into an overall system. And you know, some of these targets certainly the, the herd genetics is very very important. One we we talk about an awful lot, and we've talked about over the years, is the question of productivity and and and, and stocking rate. I suppose the, the, an important point really is that when we when we look at the profitability on systems from a, from a dairy point of view and from a beef point of view as well, but from certainly from a dairy point of view, it's actually the amount of grass that we can grow and utilize is the main driver of profitability at farm level. More important than you know individual milk yield per cow, for example, or more important than breed type. Really, it's around can we maintain and utilize? Can we maintain the utilization of grass while that's matching the productivity measures and the profitability measures with um, some of the some of the environmental measures as well. So look at our target really is for the, for the dairy system is to be targeting something around 11, 12 tons of dry matter of grass utilized uh, for every hectare. So that means basically can we grow and utilize 11 to 12 tons of grass dry matter per hectare per year. That's the that's kind of the target is where we're at. So obviously, you know, to make that happen, whether it's dairy or beef, there are a number of elements that come into that. It's not just as simple as growing it. Obviously, you have to grow it first. So your soil fertility, um, your, your your nitrogen strategy, and your quality of your sward affects that. Grazing skills is a big part of that. So you know the 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 ability to manage uh, get animals into swards at the right height and out of the right height as well. That's important. Stocking rate is a key one actually, and we'll come back to that in a second. Stocking rate very very important. You know if we understock the farm, we won't utilize what we've grown. 
if we overstock the farm, we become more reliant on purchase feed and that comes at a, at a cost, okay? We also need highly productive animals uh, to produce uh, milk solids or live weight gain. Um, the maintenance cost of the animals is a big part of, of the feed budget as well. So, you know, a lot of the grass we grow, maybe 40% of the feed that we actually grow on the farm is used for just maintaining the animals. So if we're overstocked, for example, or we're relative to our grass growth rate, uh, we will end up spending too much time or too much of our feed just maintaining animals and not producing saleable product and obviously then as well feed supplement uh, comes off that too so if we have too much feed supplement coming in relative to our stocking rate or relative to what we're growing the amount of grass we'll utilize uh, will drop as well obviously because the animals can only eat so much so if we're over supplementing with purchase feed it has negative consequences for profitability uh, and uh, for sustainability in, in an overall sense as well so that so when we talk about grass utilized it's not just simply about you know grazing uh, grazing tactics or grazing paddock by paddock all of these other things have to come in uh, to play as well okay so we'll, we'll just take our target is around the 12 tons and the details of how to achieve that will be dealt with uh, further on down the line stocking rate is an interesting one i know sean you'll come in on this too but stocking rate is one we're asked about all the time what's the optimum stocking rate for the farm and really that's kind of like a how long is a piece of string type of a question because really the optimal stocking rate depends on um, it depends on what grass the farm is actually growing. So for example, you know, in your typical dairy system, you need about five and a half tons of grass per, per cow, essentially, uh, five and a half tons dry matter per cow per year. So therefore, if you're growing maybe 11 tons, your optimal stocking rate for the farm is probably close to two cows per hectare. If you're growing 14 tons, your optimal stocking rate on a whole farm basis is closer to maybe 2.3, 2.4 per hectare. We do hear people talking about stocking at 2.8 and 2.9 per hectare, uh, but that really, uh, on, the, on the grazing platform if you like, but that, that would require a significant amount of imported feed to sustain it. End use efficiency obviously has to fit into all this as well. There's no point in driving, trying to drive extra grass growth and grass utilised while having poor nitrogen use efficiency, particularly with the cost and the environmental concerns that you heard about. So our target is can we grow more and utilise more uh, while still driving our, in our end use efficiency up closer maybe to 35-40% uh, in the short term. It's doable and I say, as I say the details will come uh, further down. A working target for us maybe on the dairy side would be looking at systems that can operate on maybe a, a chemical N input of around 150 kilos. Uh, assuming if we have clover in the system to, to make up the difference uh, of maybe 80 to 100 kilos of nitrogen, that's bringing us on a whole farm, on a whole system basis back sort of closer to the 220 in real terms. Uh, but it's an, from a chemical end point of view, it's important to try and get that figure down. But implementation of clover systems is critical to that and obviously then too uh, in terms of our carbon uh, footprint or our carbon output our target is trying to push that down to sort of 0.8 per kilo of milk produced or even a bit less than that uh, at the moment it's closer to maybe 0 0.9 0 0.92 there's definitely scope to make some improvements uh, fertilizer type and everything you'll hear about today will explain how that can be done other countries might be um, more intensive systems more reliant on on concentrate feed and more reliant on uh, fossil fuels to feed their herd that they could be up at more like 1.2 1.3 but our working target is about 0.8 and you'll be able to see that on your own uh, sustainability reports uh, your, your board B uh, reports etc so look at the, the main message is really that the technical targets that we're talking about even though there's a lot of emphasis today on you know technologies from an environmental point of view which are critical they can fit into the overall system and the system can still look very uh, profitable and very very efficient in terms of its output uh, from a dairy point of view uh, and obviously Sean you'll come on the, on the beef side and see how that works in a second so I think what, we, what we're just encouraging people to do today is think about the metrics that make a difference for the farm and see how the technologies can fit in uh, to make all these changes that we're talking about down here how that can how that can work. So Sean, do you want to maybe go through that for the, the yeah. side of things as well? Uh, good morning folks, so my name is Sean Cummins. Um, I'll be just touching on the metrics for beef production systems. So within Chagas we have an extensive body of work 
on dairy beef and it's going back the last 40, 50 years. There's trials ongoing in Johnstown Castle and we also have mirrored trials going up in Chagas Grange. When we look at our targets or what we're aiming for our dairy beef production, we're looking for the carcass grade of O equals. What that means is we're going to have an animal that's going to meet carcass specs in terms of our QPS and our breed bonuses. Um, in terms of our carcass weight, we're looking for 300 kilos. Um, that's really the carcass weight which animal value is optimised and which the, the meat yield of the animal is optimised as well. Um, I suppose it's important that we don't lose focus on what's actually the key driver of profitability on calf to beef farms or farms nationally is the green stuff in front of us. So we want to achieve this with a relatively low level of meal feeding. We're aiming for under a tonne over the lifetime of an animal. So that encompasses the calf rearing period, the, the first winter and then any concentrate required during the silage or during the, during the finishing period. In terms of grass, grass utilisation, we're aiming for a target of about 10 tonne per hectare. As Joe said, that depends from or varies from farm to farm. If we look ahead at a farm, uh, uh, generally we're looking at about 4.5 tonne per livestock unit. So a farm growing 10 is about 2. If a farm is up at 15, they're 3. But if a farm is back at 5 tonne, they're back at 1 livestock unit per hectare. Um, there will also be stands today focused on nitrogen use efficiency um, and how that can be achieved. So for dairy beef production systems, we're looking at a target of greater than 35%, which can be achieved, achieved through incorporating legumes that likes the clover, red clover, in our, in our ground and proper nutrient management planning plan at farm level. Um, we're aiming for a target of about 150 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, um, artificial nitrogen per hectare spread to grow and again we're looking at this is probably a figure that's going to become more and more important down the line is the actual CO2 figure attributed to our beef so we're aiming for a figure of less than 13 uh, per kilo of beef. In terms of our practical steps to improve uh, the grass utilised on farm, I suppose Joe will come in and out on this, is probably the first thing we have to do is sort of invest in soil fertility. I suppose there's probably a big mistake on this board if we look at lime should always come first. Lime is probably the cheapest fertiliser and we've seen this over the last year particularly. Um, we've seen artificial fertilisers almost triple in price. Lime has gone up about 5-6 euro a ton this year. So get your lime right, focus on improving your pH. If you're targeting clover, you need your pH closer to 6.5. For grassland spores, we generally aim for 6.3. Um, then focus on your P and K. We're aiming to pull soil P and K up to about an index three, um, and that can be achieved. So the first step is get your soil fully right through your lime. That's automatically going to bring up your P by one index. Work from David Wallet showed that over the years, and then you go with targeted applications of artific artificial and organic fertilizer. Um, I suppose improvement in swar type is probably an area that we'll have to look at as well. So we've seen, we've done work on the Chagas Green Acres program over the years and particularly on farms operating on low input permanent pasture we've seen it was very very hard for farmers to achieve sort of optimum target daily weight gains. I suppose that was coming from two factors. Firstly, um, the quality just wasn't in the sward and no matter what strategy we put in play we weren't able to graze down those swards properly so if we went early in the year the bounce wasn't there to, to grow back if we went late in the year we're dealing with a stemmy bush all year and um, so we'll be targeting improving or a uh, applying perennial ryegrass and uh, clover varieties into our swards to improve animal performance. If we look back on the work historically there's about 0.1 of a kilo a day difference in the performance of livestock on on perennial ryegrass swards versus older swards at farm level. In addition to this in terms of approved sward type we're also going to have increased nitrogen efficiency and we're going to have the potential to get to this figure here of 10 tonne per hectare. Um, I suppose we, we, we have to focus on how we're actually measuring or how we're actually managing grass at farm level and the only way I suppose you could nearly say the last couple of weeks down this side there's really been no need to measure it hasn't grown but before, before that you, you can identify like we have farms who are measuring on a weekly basis they've seen that this deficit was coming four or five, week, five weeks ago they've been supplementing they've been changing strategy on farm they've been introducing silage with the aim to try and build grass in the back end of the year i suppose grazing af infrastructure as well i suppose this probably should be moved up further on the board as well is probably one of the most important things um, we're trying to aim to grow grass in 21 days graze it in three so if we have animals in paddocks for too long, we're going to affect regrowths, uh, we're going to slow down the rotation, and we're actually going to reduce animal performance and the amount of grass we grow on farm. And I suppose Joe touched on this as well in terms of matching stocking rate to the pasture grown. 
we don't want systems where we're going higher than this figure. We've seen farms and both on the dairy side of the house and beef side of the house that they're putting in additional concentrate supplementation at the, as, as, as a, a due, due to not being able to grow enough grass. So what we're trying to do is actually match the amount of stock on your ground to the grass you're growing on farm. And that's going to feed back into your measurements. So if you have 30 measurements a year, you know exactly your, you have a relatively like accurate figure on how much grass your farm has grown. Um, and then the supplementation feeding. Do you want to come in on this one, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, I can come back in there, um, Sean. I suppose it's it's the, sub, the question about minimising substitution. Like really, again, when we talk about utilising more grass, um, it's to get as much production and much performance as possible from uh, from the from the hectare of ground, but also from the animal as well. So we don't want to be in a situation where 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 um, buying purchase feed or bringing in purchase feed at a higher cost, maybe this year could be three times, three and a half times the cost of what you can grow yourself, even with the high cost of fertilizer. You know, you have to think of it, the, the feed that's purchased in, it was grown with fertilizer as well. So it's going to be costly too, uh, and it's going to be quite costly relative to what you can grow yourself. But it's a, just as, a, as an example, I suppose, or it's an interesting one, we talk about these targets for the, for the dairy system. On the farm here at the moment, there's f actually four, there's 150 cows on the farm at the moment. They're divided into four different groups. There's four different, there's two separate trials going on each with two groups. So there's about, you could say there's four mini herds on the farm, okay? And that range is from, that range is from uh, two winter milk herds uh, on different types of concentrate and then two spring milk herds. One of them grazing a the grass clover sward and one of them grazing a multi-species sward like you'll see in a, in a few minutes. So when you think about that, there's a very large range of different types of system on the farm here. Uh, but in all cases, whether that's a winter milk system eating a ton and a half of concentrate or it's a multi-species system eating sort of four or five hundred kilos of concentrate, they are all running with the same idea that we want to minimise substitution uh, during the summer period. So when you think about that, it, the, the, the systems look quite different on paper, but when you're here during the summer and you're looking at the cows out on grass, they're all essentially eating the same type of grass. They're managed on the same type of rotation as best as possible uh, and their level of supplementation, uh, the, 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 um, the decision rules around supplementation are the same across what looks like four very different farming systems with four very different outputs. And maybe it's the same, Sean, on the, on the, on the beef side where last time I checked there's about 100 different beef systems running in the country. Uh, maybe what we should be looking at rather than talking all this time about systems and systems and systems, really any system we're running should be looking at making sure we're grazing as much or utilising as much grass uh, as possible. So that's the important point, you know, rather than thinking that your farm is somehow different or that it's a very different challenge for you relative to everyone else. Generally speaking, when we look at the figures, these are the things that make the difference for profitability. And even though you have maybe difference in soil type or location or even animal type, bring it back to what can you do to, to utilize more grass on the farm while also meeting these targets here. And that's really what the kind of what the day is about. OK, so look at the take home messages on that. Um, Think about how you can utilize more. As Sean said, it starts really with building on soil fertility and infrastructure uh, and the four types. So can you get utilize more per hectare and get positive gain on margin by having better animal performance and less reliance on, less reliance on purchase feed? Uh, you have to balance that productivity with your nutrient use efficiency. So it's not a case of maximizing the amount of purchased nutrient. It's really about optimizing the use of it and the use of, of, of slurries, as you'll see in a while. And one big one as well, and we, you know, we've mentioned it on both sides, I suppose, is that animal genetics and health very much key to performance. You know, the right genetics in a grazing system and healthy animals will, uh, will help to utilize the pasture to a much greater degree. So that's the kind of the context and what we're sitting. The details are going to come next, but look, we'll take any questions now maybe if, if you have them before you move on to the next to the next board.